morning. <laughs> I'd also like to um, start by maybe thanking the chairs for inviting me in this role today. Um, very entertaining for um, Saturday morning. So um, in the next uh, few minutes, I will try to convince you that um, we are not quite there yet, although I have to say that I'm very fond of liquid biopsies. But don't worry, Thomas. I, I'll do my best to, to, to offer uh, some resistance and, and, and be a good sport. OK, so um, I, when I was um, invited, I was, um, I was happy at the beginning, but then I was worried of how to organize the talk. So um, I, I chose uh, a very simple approach. So um, uh, we'll talk about some advantages of liquid biopsies and disadvantages, and finally some conclusions. So um, you wouldn't say, oh, Fernando, you chose these advantages. Um, I was happy to find that there's a recent uh, review in one of the main uh, pathology journals. So here again, pathology came, came to the rescue. Um, so I chose uh, three advantages uh, of uh, liquid biopsies that I will try to refute. And then I will talk about three disadvantages of liquid biopsies that I will uh, try to uh, emphasize. So um, the first one is uh, that they, they say it's a simple test for daily practice. I have to say I, I completely disagree with this. I am a pathologist, but I have proper molecular training. And um, most of the uh, liquid biopsy approaches that are offered right now from uh, commercial labs are based on next generation sequencing. Um, so uh, this is the workflow of, um, of a typical uh, NGS uh, assay. So as you can see, it, it doesn't matter if you start with tissue or blood, the workflow is very, very complex, has many different uh, parts that are not fully automated, even in the best CLIA certified lab where, where these procedures are performed. And lots of things can go wrong. And at the end, obviously, you have a bioinformatic approach uh, where you have to decide whether to call positive or negative, a finding, et cetera. So, Luis, this is the reason why, why the specificity is not good, because, because there's a serious risk of false positive uh, when you are dealing with, with very low um, tumor content, very low DNA or RNA. <clears throat> In fact, um, if you look at some of the publications, there have been some um, uh, false positive with the RNA part of, of this test or the rearrangements part of this test, and this is typical of, of the RNA work. There is a risk of contamination when you try to amplify RNA when dealing with very small quantities. So for me, it's not that simple for daily practice, at least the, the NGS-based uh, uh, approach. Um, the, the other comment uh, is that this is a, a rapid test. Okay, I can maybe agree that if we are doing this on a reflex manner, a patient comes in the clinic, you draw blood, you send it to the lab, and, and, and the procedure is, is performed with a real-time PCR assay. Yes, maybe this can take a few hours, but usually labs batch up cases. So you don't typically get a, a result back in a, in a few hours. Again, if you are using um, NGS, this typically can take two weeks, and as Thomas mentioned, this can even go up to three or four weeks if something uh, goes wrong or, or the lab doesn't have enough number of cases to fill in the, the chips that we typically use. The, the other comment is that now if the result comes back negative, then you have to go back to the tumor board and ask for a rebiopsy. So then the whole procedure I'm talking about, identifying the, the correct status of a mutation in a given patient can take even several weeks. And I will talk about sensitivity in a minute. Uh, well, this was the comment about going back to the tumor board, because in fact, I think specificity, it's much better than sensitivity. I will show you a meta-analysis now. So um, we're talking about roughly one out of maybe uh, two patients that you have to go back to the tumor board and, and ask for a rebiopsy. So, uh, at least from my understanding, that's not very convenient for the patient or, or the clinical workflow. Um, the other comment about the uh, speed of these tests is around the analytical phase. This is a recent review that came uh, out um, 
And, well, obviously we all have conflict of interest, but this is not from one given company. And these authors, they review the analytical uh, turnaround time of uh, the probably most, some of the most popular tests. So typically a real-time PCR assay can take between three and four days. Uh, some of the digital PCR approaches that we can even do in-house can take a bit longer because the workflows are quite complex, not standardized. So I'm talking about, for example, beaming, seven, eight working days. And finally, NGS, I think it's not realistic to give a result in less than two weeks, 14 days, something like that. Because, you know, it's a very complex procedure, takes many days, etc. So only the analytical uh, phase of the procedure I don't think is that fast. Um, so along these lines, I found out this uh, cartoon from The New Yorker um, a few years ago. Because I, I think we tend to think of liquid biopsies like something very simple. You draw blood, send it to the lab, you get a result. And I don't think we are taking them uh, very seriously sometimes. So, um, so again, I think this is not helping the field. So I thought this was um, you know, timely. Anyway, um, the third comment around the advantages is that we are able to detect resistance mechanisms with um, this approach. Um, I completely agree that um, studying uh, copy number variations and other things in liquid biosis is more difficult, more challenging than just simple uh, mutations, at least substitutions. And there are other things that are more difficult with liquid biopsy. This is a real case from our institution. The patient was diagnosed with an exon, typical exon 19 deletion in EGFR uh, with, typic, with one of the typical real-time PCR approaches that we use. Uh, well, to make uh, a long story short, the patient was treated with third generation TKIs. So uh, when uh, the uh, man developed a uh, metastasis, we performed an NGS panel. We confirmed that the exon 19 deletion was still there, but in addition, it had uh, the 790M mutation. We already knew, knew that. And also the resistance mutation 797S. And the reason why I'm including this information here is because, uh, oddly enough, and probably unsurprisingly, some of the new panels that we are using for uh, liquid biopsies do not include all the resistance mechanism. And, there, and, and that's why the, uh, the field is moving so quickly that there's really no time to include all these new mechanisms in the commercial panels that, that we are using. And in fact, uh, this uh, new resistance mutation is not part of, of some of the, of the panels. Um, as an exercise, just uh, for this controversy, uh, we had blood from this patient, so we did an, an exercise um, and we used two different assays uh, in, in, in the plasma. One assay was supposed to be more sensitive, an NGS approach, and as you can see, it was able to detect the resistance mutation, but it didn't detect the exon 19 deletion, and I was not surprised by that because as a molecular biologist, I can tell you that NGS, some NGS approaches are not the best for detecting these small indels in EGFR. And also, that's you know, kind of funny, but uh, the 797S mutation was not included in a, a plasma just recently released uh, panel. So probably that's not that useful clinically, at least in some settings. Whereas when we used a less sensitive approach, one that we have probably in, in, in every lab, real-time PCR assay, the, the, uh, the exon 19 deletion was perfectly, it was a re very robust assay, was perfectly detected, but this panel doesn't include the, the new resistance mutation because, you know, it's kind of an old version of, of the approaches that we are now using. Anyway, um, this is, uh, for me at least, it was an interesting exercise. So um, in, in terms of the disadvantages, I'll try to emphasize them to try to convince you. The first one is that there, there are large numbers of analytical methods. Uh, this is a very nice review. I'm not going to enter into the details, but for me, talking about liquid biopsies is like if we talk about cars or food. I mean, I think we need to be more specific because these platforms are very different from each other, different sensitivities, specificities, clinical utilities, etc. So I think we need to be careful of what we talk when we are trying to compare uh, uh, the, these um, liquid biopsies. 
The other comment is around sensitivity. I think the possibilities of false negative result is very high. This is a recent uh, multicenter uh, or, or meta-analysis uh, involving trials uh, from, from different sites. And as you can see, the sensitivity is, for me at least, is not that great, 0.4, maybe even 0.7. So uh, really, I, I think for a test that's supposed to be a screening test, for me, I think it, it would be better if it was not a screening test, but just a final test. Sensitivity is not, is not great. Um, the same happens when you're trying to compare different assays. I particularly like this publication because it's kind of an independent comparison of, of technical approaches. And as you can see, the sensitivity for detecting the main resistance mutation in EGFR, it's quite low. It's even 40%, uh, even not, not even 30% with one of the real-time PCR assays that we're using in the clinic. A little bit better with digital PCR, 70%, but not, not that great. And, and the same happens if we look at the different EGFR mutations, because again, I think in this story we've been too simplistic. It's not about only EGFR, but we have to know if we are trying to detect the deletion or the point mutation, because the sensitivity and the specificity of the assays uh, it is very different. So as you can see there, for example, the, the sensitivity I think is quite good, maybe for the deletion, uh, but for other uh, rare mutations is not that great. Even for the typical uh, exon 21 mutation, it's only 62%. Um, the possibility of a false positive test, I agree, it's, it's out there in everything we do in medicine, but we need to always consider that whenever we try to increase the sensitivity in, in molecular biology, there's always a risk of uh, false positives. Uh, this is a recent also comment in, 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 uh, in a journal. But I think it has also been shown in independent comparisons. For example, for me, this was really um, something to demonstrate something that I was kind of uh, seeing in, in my clinic. And, and is the trend of very sensitive assays to, for, to risk uh, false positivities. So as you can see there, if we look at exon 21 or the resistant mutations, the um, specificity is not that great with digital PCR. I think this is obvious because, you know, very sensitive assays, higher risk of false positives. And the same happens uh, if you take samples from a clinical trial, the same publication, they compare real-time PCR versus digital PCR, and again, the specificity for the resistance mutation not great in any of those, but at worst, definitely in, in the digital PCR uh, approach. Uh, the same happens if, again, we look at the different EGFR mutations. I particularly like this uh, table that I think most interesting information in this regard sometimes is in the supplementary um, part of the manuscript, so you don't take the time of, of going into the details. But again, as you can see, the specificity is not the same if you're looking at exon 19. Again, high risk of false positivity because also it's very difficult to detect these small indels uh, in, in EGFR. Um, so in conclusion, I have to say that, sorry, but yes, I, I'm convinced that probably uh, liquid biopsies will replace tissue biopsies, but probably not completely and not tomorrow. I think we'll still need combination of methodologies in some cases. So probably I think it's good uh, to, to be aware of that and to find ways uh, to make it happen in, in, the, in a typical clinical workflow. I think we do need well-designed trials because really there's no gold standard. I disagree with the idea that studying uh, cell-free DNA in plasma captures the heterogeneity of a tumor. I, I, there's no prospective study that demonstrates uh, that. In fact, we're looking at heterogeneity with NGS, uh, separating the different areas of a tumor, and I can tell you that all the alterations are present throughout the tumor, but we don't know if all these alterations are really present in blood, or when, or how we are going to be able to detect them. So I would rather focus on the specificity. Uh, I think we need to standardize the pre-analytics, I think we've been also too simplistic. It's not only to draw blood and send it to the lab. I think if you uh, wait a few hours, maybe the results are not the same, the type of tubes, etc. So I think we need to look into that. 
And I would love to see more independent comparisons, uh, not funded by, by the companies, etc. cetera. Uh, so we really know uh, how the assets that we are using in the clinic uh, perform. So um, this is the end of my talk. So in, in short, for my mother, a tissue biopsy today. For my mother-in-law, maybe a liquid biopsy. Thank you. <laughs>